Um, yeah, man. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So, whoa, what was that noise? There is like, I think they're building a fence right oh, next to me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it just started like okay. 10 minutes ago. <laughs> perfect. Right when you get there, you're like, yeah, yeah. That happened to me the other day. I had a really important meeting and I like got all set for it. I had like a nice shirt on. I'm like getting ready to go. Yeah, everybody quiet. The dogs are locked. And then all of a sudden, like the gardeners just showed up right the meeting started. And like, <laughs> ah! like right outside my window. I was like, fuck. <laughs> and I don't want to like go outside and be like, guys, you know, I don't want, I'm not that, you know, I don't get that asshole. It's like making them not do their job. Um, so if there's more loud noises, I apologize. Just ask me to repeat and I'm happy to. Don't worry about it. We've, we on uh, our expert interview with um with Ben for the prepping thing. He thought it was at the school, so he went to the school waiting. Oh, no. It was live, <laughs> and so we were all waiting, like waiting for him. Yeah. So he jumped on in the car while driving to do his interview. <laughs> so <laughs> it well, was, they can do. It worked. It worked. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. So I'm super stoked to have you. Like I know we go to lunch a lot, and we talk about all this stuff all the time. Um, you're my surfing buddy and everything. And then I was mm. thinking, like, you know, I want to bring some of these conversations that we get to have together. To the community for a crop because I think we all benefit from it. Um, I know. One of the things I'm proud of or that I try to do really well is any type of information we give to the students is really highly vetted. Um, so that way, you know, when they're actually learning something from our school or, or anything like that, they know that it's like, it's good stuff. It's not just, you know, just random people sure. coming in. Like, uh, it just so happens you were a member at crop for a little while. And, mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a cool story. I think I met you um, while doing, I went into a cryotherapy session. Yeah. Uh, Cause I went out of there and I think I walked past you. I can't remember why we talked. Um, uh, Dan introduced us. Yeah, he introduced yeah. us. He's like, you're gonna like this guy. And I'm like, all right. And then I saw you walk out. I'm like, hey, what's going on? And then you're like, hey. <laughs> and I think you said you might've heard of us before because maybe you were doing some research and to find Yeah, I, I've been looking into Krav and I think I, I stumbled across your school and got on an email list or something like that. And then, uh, and I think we started emailing from there just about Krav and then somehow turned into business. And then, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Well, actually, I emailed you because you were, because I, when I found, when I looked into you, you, you did a lot of health, like natural health practice. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, I like that, you know. Um, and I was curious, I had actually just tech, I emailed you, oh, yes. So I emailed you an actual really personal health question. Like about okay. me and my girlfriend at the, I, I was like, hey man, here's some things, you know, like in life that we're trying to figure out, like as far as like our health stuff. And I was like, I remember being super personal and you emailed back a really like long, great response and you didn't know who I was. And then I responded to you or, oh no, I went to forward that to my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, read this. And Steve had some stuff about like our liver and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I accidentally forwarded that to somebody else. Oh no. Brooke, one of our coaches at XD. Uh -huh. She responded back going, I think I just read the most personal. I don't think I ever need to know any more of that stuff about you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh fuck. But I'm an open book, so I don't really care anyways. It's not the pretty funny You never story. told me that. That's like, like She was like, well, he sent this to me. Funny. So I must need to read it, like, which makes right. sense. Like, sure. I, so she's like, so I read it, like the whole thing, because I was like, why would Joey send this to me if you didn't want me to like to know about something? And so she <laughs> like, read everything. And I was like, all right, well, there's my whole, there's everything. There's everything. My health. <laughs> oh. She was like, I don't understand. I'm like, well, well, now you know. Right. <laughs> um, but I remember being super grateful that you actually responded and it was actually an insightful response. It wasn't just like, Oh, well take this pill. It was like, Oh no, you know, you might have a liver issue. So you like, you know, here's how you do a liver cleanse. Like you actually talked more in depth about natural ways to like feel better. Um, then I remember, I think I even emailed you asking questions for my dad and he got good yeah. responses and read all of them and was super I remember that. interested in that too. Hope that helped. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I love that stuff. And I remember the, uh, the response that Joey forwarded me. Right off. Yeah, so like it was one of those things where, you know, and then of course you started training Krav, which was really great. I loved having a class. I think you knew Darlene. Um, yeah. And then uh, we got somehow we went to lunch. I can't remember why, but I think I, I can't remember what it was about. I think I was actually going to ask you about doing something with Krav, uh, like, okay. doing, like this type of thing, like an interview, like of course. And so we, we talked, then we realized we had a lot in common about marketing and business and all that stuff. And so then we started hanging out and then we started doing business stuff together, which we've done, we've partnered on some things together. Yeah. Um, we surf together. Uh, you're my go-to guy for all health stuff. And so I, I'm happy that you got to take some time to kind of jump in here. Um, 
can you do really quickly like a like just kind of introduce who you are kind of what you study or what you do so that way people just kind of get a general idea of like okay yeah, this guy yeah, yeah. This. so unfortunately it's not as easy as saying like i'm a chiropractor um because yeah. i have a really eclectic background but and the basic idea is i decided when i was five i wanted to get into natural health natural medicine and I was nine, I remember walking out of the doctor's office with my mom because I was always having like ear infections, sinus infections, immune problems, digestive problems. And there, I was just always in the doctor's office. And I remember walking out at nine years old and I looked at my mom and I was like, they don't know what they're doing. I'm going to have to try and figure this out myself. Luckily, <laughs> like a nine year old would do. Yeah, I mean, just like nine year olds do. So luckily I come from a medical family. My folks had a lot of books. You know, my mom's a nurse. My dad was a lifeguard paramedic. We got doctors and nurses in the family. We had a ton of books. So I just started reading them at nine years old. And like for my 10th birthday, I remember asking for like diet books, nutrition books. And as much as a little guy could understand, I just started absorbing all of it and putting myself on diets and putting myself on like calorie restriction and trying everything, you know, everything. The oddest nine-year-old, I think, in the world. (laughs) Super weird, right? Everyone else is playing with super soakers and I'm like, no more than 30 grams of fat in a day, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, that one didn't work. But anyway, uh, so that kind of went on and I, I was able to solve a lot of my health problems and, and a lot of other ones I wasn't. So I kept getting more into it. And ultimately that led me to become a, I got into reflexology. I became a yoga instructor. I learned a bunch of different types of, hopefully that's not too loud, a bunch of different types of body work, um, which is you know, hands-on manual therapies, like for pain relief injury rehab. I became a medical exercise specialist, an emergency medical technician, a clinical nutritionist, a master herbalist, um, a QRA practitioner, and a doctor of pastoral medicine, and probably a bunch of other stuff I just don't even remember right now. But over the years, I kind of put all that together. Started my practice when I was 18 or 19. And just kind of as I learned more and started playing with it and figuring things out for myself and finding out what works and what doesn't for other people, just ultimately put together my own blend of like, okay, here's what works. Here's kind of like what you're sold. Here's kind of what you're told. Here's kind of what's popular. And then like, here's actually what works. Hmm. And that's basically where I'm coming from. Yeah. And didn't you, uh, you mentioned something about having a pretty big problem yourself for your Yeah. That kind of stirred everything. Yeah. When I was 24, like three weeks before uh, my wedding actually, um, just out of the blue, I was in acupuncture school. I, I was almost done actually. And unfortunately I had to quit to deal with all this stuff, but, um, just totally out of the blue, like all hell broke loose health wise. And, um, at that point I was already all those things I just mentioned and none of it was working, which is a really scary place to find yourself. You know, supposedly you're the guy who has the answers yeah. and, uh, none of the answers are working. And that's what really put some fire under my butt to figure even more out and kind of put things together and rehash things and kind of try everything and and, uh get things done you know yeah so like i guess so uh, that's an interesting question actually um so when you i would say personally like in my opinion that uh by getting to that place where all the stuff you're learning is like all here you're like fuck yeah i got this it's kind (laughs) of like for marketing for myself like i got this i got this and i do something it just doesn't work Totally. It's like, <laughs> it's exactly like that. And it's like, oh, well, I, this is like the way it should work. How come it's not doing what it should be doing? Right. Um, and then I think if you're in that place, you're actually in a, have a benefit because you have like this ability to say, uh, fuck it. Like I have all this knowledge, but yet for some reason, just like this, the key hasn't been turned. Like there's totally. like something missing in it. So now you're at this path of like figuring that out. Yeah, and it allows you to backed up with the knowledge of what all the stuff you've learned. Because obviously, all that stuff matters. Like you still use oh, totally. it. Totally, like, totally. But now you're able to digest and dissect and get deeper into problems to figure out what the root is uh, that yes. maybe mainstream education is not sharing. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, at the time it really messed with me. I felt like I kind of got lied to and betrayed almost because it's like this is what you guys said works and it didn't work. And then I went and learned something else. And like they said that worked and that didn't work. And I, you know, yeah. over time that kind of like messed with your, my head and really made me doubt myself a lot. Cause it's like, does any of this work? It does. And that's when I really like, okay, let's figure out what does work. Cause obviously there's pieces of this that work. There's things that work. Like let's take what's good and let's 
keep that and let's find what's good over here and keep that. And we'll kind of put it all together until we have a system that you can kind of replicate and it just works again and again and again. Gotcha. And um, that really, uh, that's, that's, that was a big, that was a big one for me. I was going to say something else I forgot, but um, I'm sure it'll come up. Yeah, that definitely did a, a number on my head until, until I kind of changed how I look at it and just realized it was essentially, there we go, it was incomplete. You know, it's like, this is great, but it's incomplete. And the other understanding that really, I think, helped was just understanding that it was empirically this works. It doesn't mean it, like, works across the board every time. But empirically, this is true. This, uh, the, you know, you do this, this happens, cause and effect. But it doesn't mean it's worked out like clockwork every time for everyone. So when things kind of don't go to plan or don't hold up to that, how do you fill in the gaps and connect things and really get the, get the result you're looking for even if you know things have failed you, if you've come across incomplete information, and for yeah. that reason, I mean, I kind of built a reputation as that's kind of the people I've worked with. Is like you know, people go, well, I kind of been everywhere and tried everything and seen everyone, and you know, now what? And it's like, okay, cool, let me show you. <laughs> yeah, so that's what drew, drew me to I think a while back when we first talked, is you, you mentioned that some of your clients or patients or whatever you call them. Mm-hmm. Um, they come to you as a last resort almost. Pretty much, yeah. They've already tried most things and they're like, well, shit, like I still have this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're kind of like that last, that, you're like the bomb squad. Like, <laughs> like we've been doing else and like, you're like, okay, you got the shield on, you have to yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to go in and like dissect the actual root problem. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that sounds tough and so you okay how long did you have a little uh, practice in Costa Mesa because I remember that's where I met you at your office yeah yeah I was in that office for how long was I in that office five or six years maybe mm. um, but my practice has been in Costa Mesa for 18 or 19 okay well I guess technically it's in Newport now for the last two or three but yeah. over by the airport so I've been in this area for the whole time that's awesome and you're currently not really running a practice as much anymore. Like it's more of, um, it's more, it's all like online coaching and giving people the kind of information that I've found useful, uh, via newsletters. And if, if people want more like uh, attention, one-on-one -on -one attention, then I have coaching options available. And then I guess my last question to kind of wrap up the about you thing, uh, yeah. is, um, what are the kind of the things that you, dealt with for people like what what like i know you did a ton of stuff we've talked about like hundreds of different yeah, yeah. things but like what are the common things that people would come to you and be like help <laughs> like yeah. what the fuck i've kind of seen everything under the sun the, the real common denominator is like we were talking about what do you do when nothing's working um and because when that's the case the answer is always the same if that makes sense like it doesn't and that's actually a big myth about health issues that I think is a major reason people don't get better. And it's because, and it's nobody's fault. It's entirely innocent. It's, it's really just because we've been kind of conditioned to think a certain way based on how medicine does things. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But when that's not enough, then we're kind of left with a paradigm that doesn't work. So the idea is I have X, what do I do for that? Right. I have anxiety. How do I fix my anxiety? I have irritable bowel syndrome. How do I fix that? I have an autoimmune disease. How do I fix that? I have, and, and if we approach it that way, if you kind of tried stuff and it didn't work and you've been using that approach, which is understandably how we'd naturally think of things, you're going to come up with dead end after dead end after dead end because that's not, that's a treatment mentality, right? Yeah. It's diagnosis treatment. I have this, take this for it. They're yeah. kind of a pill or drug thing. And, and so I've worked with anything that's essentially chronic meaning it just doesn't go away and then you need to make it go away and what do you do and when that happens it's a very different mindset the answer is always the autonomic nervous system which you're obviously very familiar with with Krav and, and everything and, and we all are personally but that's the fight or flight response yeah if you are stuck in some degree of fight or flight and all of us are to an extent some more than others right yeah. so for, for anyone that may be listening and they don't know what that is there's a portion of your nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. It has two branches. One is called the sympathetic nervous system, which, and the more you're in that state, it's like there's a bear chasing you that wants you for lunch. Obviously not good. And the more you're in that state, the more your body shuts everything else down. Just for the simple reason, if you really were being chased by a bear, your body's like, well, you're not going to go take a nap. You're not going to go to the bathroom. You're not going to sit down and eat right now. You need to get the hell out of here. 
So your body shuts down everything non-essential. <laughs> That's fitting for the times. Your body <laughs> shuts down everything non-essential for, um, for essentially survival and getting the heck out of danger, right? Yeah. So that's always what it comes down to when there's a chronic thing that won't go away, regardless of what it is. And if we approach it from that perspective, what you want to do is shift yourself from that sympathetic state into a more, the other branch of your nervous system, which is the parasympathetic, which is where resting, digesting, sleeping, and healing happens. And if you get into that state, it's just going to take care of itself, essentially. That makes sense. That, that, that makes sense? That's, that's yeah, kind of... Well, it makes sense. It probably makes sense to me more than others, only because I've talked to you a lot. Sure. Um, you know that like when we, when we talk and you're helping somebody with infertility that's having a hard time having a baby, yeah. your, your treatment plan is essentially getting them out of the parasympathetic state. Their body can heal so them. their body can do what it's supposed to do without outside intervention, essentially. Yeah, or when someone's having sleep issues, it's kind of similar. Or someone's yeah. having even weight issues, maybe where like your digestion needs to work. You know, yeah. everything needs to be better. Like we need to get you out of that parasympathetic state. Absolutely. There's like a whole bunch of different ways to do that, of course. Like yeah. it's a big process. Um, I know personally, I'm all I have a very high parasympathetic state. Like I, every time I've gotten a massage, every time. They're like, you're so tense. Right. <laughs> it's like, I'm be relaxed. I can fucking be right now. I'm half asleep. Right. Like, there's no right. way I'm tense. Like, you're tense. It feels like you're flexing. I'm like, nope. And like, and that's just like always been that way. Like, I, every once in a while, I'll be sitting down and I'll actually realize I'm crunching my jaw shut. I'm like, whoa, that's... Is, like, relax. <laughs> so, like, so, like, I have to do meditation every morning. I do 20 minutes or more. I yep. have to do all these extra things. I try to stretch. I try to do all these mind things just to help my brain relax a little bit. And then I get in that, that state again and then I have to relax again. So I know I yeah. have those problems and I'm constantly working on them. Yeah, uh, and it's good that you're aware of it because really the hidden danger with that is there's a phenomenon called adaptation syndrome and maybe you're familiar, but essentially it's like, I, I've been in this state for so long, I don't even know, it, it, this feels normal to me and I don't even know what normal actually is. So if you think of that fight or flight scale as zero, this is the way I always think of it, you know, 10 being like, there's a bear eating me, right? Yeah. That's about as bad as it gets. And then like, one, on the other end of that, there's, there's this Bible verse that says the perfect peace that surpasses all understanding. That's always what comes in my head. So to me, that's the spectrum. Yeah. And, you know, that, so that'd be like one to 10, right? Most of us are like a four, five, six, and we live in a very what's called sympathetic dominant culture, meaning a, a just generally we are like more in fight or flight than say Italy or Spain or yeah. something like that. But um, what happens is it's that old frog in the kettle thing where it's like, you know, you, you know that one where it's like a, you put a frog in boiling water, it goes, ah, it jumps right out. But if you put it in, you know, room temp water and crank the heat up bit by bit, it's so incremental, it doesn't realize the difference and it cooks alive, right? Yeah. That's adaptation syndrome. It's like, I've been in this sort of intensified state for so long, it feels like my new normal. I don't even know what normal is. So let's just say like five is kind of your new baseline because you've adapted to that adaptation syndrome. You don't even know what four, three, two, one feels like anymore. It's no. like, you don't even have a box for that. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're describing. And, and it's so insidious because we're not even aware of it. It's outside our radar because it just feels like normal. And yet that's why we can't break through and get the results we're trying to get. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, Bela said, yeah, me too. I can't relax for some reason and it sucks. Okay. Yeah, so low grade, some degree of, you know, what's called sympathetic dominance, some degree of fight or flight, too much. Something's cranked up for some reason you know, there can be, basically there's like four reasons. It can be structural, which is like your alignment, you know, um, your alignment, your flexibility, those sorts of things. It can be chemical, which is essentially the sum of your nutritional deficiencies and your toxicities. It can be uh, psychological, obviously, you know, if you just are stressed out, you're going to be in some degree of that state. And then um, there's also energetic blockages. And that might sound a little woo woo for some people, but ultimately it comes down to scar tissue, um, blocking the nerves ability to transmit their electrical impulses, which is technically electrical voltage. Oh, wow. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> like what? <laughs> um, okay. That's interesting. Um, but what's cool about that is that kind of gives you a model to work with. Like, does this person, are they in that reason? Are they in that, you know, fight or flight for structural reasons, psychological reasons, chemical reasons, or 
because of you know essentially scar tissue blocking the, the flow of electrical current in the body. And then we can kind of move through that and customize a solution to the individual. Interesting. And is, yeah. does it ever happen where it's just all four? Oh yeah, totally. It, it's almost always some combination of four, but usually there's like primarily like one big standout, sometimes two. You know, like one person might be, oh, that's all stress and toxicity. And it's like, okay, another person is primarily structural. Another person might be all, you know, nutritional deficiencies and something like that. I know. It's funny that this is absolutely not the topic I had ready to talk about, but since we're on it, might as well chat about it for a second. Let's do it. Um, can you give an example of, okay, so you said there's four issues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, structural, chemical. Um, can you give an example of what a chemical issue is? And then and, yeah. and also an example, like not, I know there's probably a hundred different ways, we can mm -hmm. do it, but maybe sure. one example of like what a chemical or what a structural, you know, what all that, maybe one example of each thing. And then one example of ways people can start looking at to get yeah, it. Yeah. So let's uh, just pick one. Let's say you live at McDonald's all day and, and all you're eating is fast food, right? Yeah. Which is obviously devoid of a lot of nutrients that we need you're going to end up nutritionally deficient. Yeah. Right? You're not getting certain vitamins. You're not getting certain minerals. Well, when those get low enough, your body needs them to function, right? So you're going to end up with certain symptoms based on that. So as an example, let's just say you don't get enough B vitamins. Yeah. Um, and most of us don't because our, st our stress levels are higher. How do I say that? The amount of B vitamins we do get from our food aren't enough to compensate for the stress that burns through our B vitamins. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's kind of like we're burning through more than we can get from the food, right? So if that happens enough, our B vitamins are low and our diet's not supporting that, or they, we're going to end up with the symptoms of B vitamin deficiency. You might be tired, you might have fatigue, you might have, uh, you might be depressed, you might be anxious, you might be in that kind of stuff. Typically, uh, sleep problems might be, you know, neurological, emotional, things like that. Okay. So that's kind of like a chemical issue. Another on the other side of chemical would be toxicity. Mm -hmm. So maybe you just live in Southern California breathing the air, which is according to the American Lung Association, you can hop on their website. It's like grade F across the board. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we're just breathing in tons of yuck. You know, you've probably heard that thing. If you, even if you're a non-smoker and live in Los Angeles, your lungs are going to look worse than someone who smoked their whole life. Um, uh, so, from, you know, from someone who lives in the cleaner. Apple, yeah. Apple just released a new thing. I say just released. They probably released a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, I just now found it. But on the app now, it actually has the air quality. Nice. At the bottom. Okay. So like when you, when you go to different cities, that air quality changes. It says AQI. I'm not sure what that stands for. Air quality index. Yeah. Air quality index. And right now, like Costa Mesa is 38. Et cetera. Right. Then when I go to Los Angeles, it says it's 51 and it's yellow, mm -hmm. which looks pretty terrible. Sure. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. I don't know how accurate it is, but it's interesting to see that there's different air qualities. Yeah, it, definitely. And, and that can kind of show you, I mean, uh, usually the closer you live to a forest or the beach or less densely populated or an airport, you know, the better it's going to be. And the closer you are to an airport, a freeway and all that, you know, it's going to be worse. Um, the only concern is like if, the index, what they're basing that on, a lot of times, you see this with ocean, like the water quality in the ocean too. Yeah. Sometimes it's so bad, they just go, uh, we're just gonna say that's okay now. And like, there's a new level of bad. The new norm, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's so bad, they just go, ah, that's all right. It's basically the baseline changes. They change the baseline. No, so, but what I did like about it, like when I saw that happen, it let me know that there's a yeah. public awareness and at least, like it's not there yet, but it's a right. first step to like yeah. getting people more aware. Not that Apple's right. some great, you know, company that's trying to make everybody more healthy because I know that's not their agenda. But at least like yeah. they're going, hey, people care enough. Let's put it on there as a feature. You know, absolutely. No, it's awesome. I think it's great. I think that's yeah. kind of cool. We saw an example of that in real life um, at our local beaches here when the Fukushima um, situation was really on the news every day. Um, people would go out there with their little Geiger counters and testers and notice the levels at our local beaches were higher than what the county said or the fed said was normal. Totally. And, and before you knew it, a week or two or three later, the feds raised the level up 
<laughs> so it was now, now back to normal. Right, right. It's okay for the tourists to come. Everyone's safe. Go back to life. And it's, you know, you're being poisoned, essentially. Sadly, that happens, you know, all over the place. But, uh, you know, that was just an example of toxicity. I mean, there's also toxins in food. There's toxins in the water. There's toxins in the air. There's, you know, we just live in a, there's a lot of synthetic chemicals these days. Yeah. And so they're in our environment. They're everywhere. And, and the body is built to detoxify. Certainly, like that, that's the job of your liver and your kidneys and things like that. They're the filters of the body. But if there's more toxic burden coming in than they can deal with, and yeah. on top of that, if they don't have the nutrition they need to compensate for that, then you're going to start building up toxins. And, you know, there's only there's a threshold of that before it starts, you know, it's like how much poison can you handle before things get weird? And realistically, the solution to that is not a pill. It's more of a try to start getting cleaner air, cleaner it's, water, cleaner foods. I mean, on a personal level, right? That'd be great on a macro scale, right? On a personal level, um, it's like two things, right? How can I stop or minimize the toxins coming into my body? You know, air filter, water filter, eat food that doesn't, you know, yeah. isn't all messed up. And, uh, and then how can I get the toxins that are already stuck in my body out? And that's where cleansing comes in. So when you hear about cleanses for a while, what's that? So they stay in you for a while. They don't just get filtered out eventually. No, they, they get stored in fat. Toxins are lipophilic, meaning they're they're attracted to fat. So they get stored in fat. And, and the problem is, uh, you know, I think it's no secret. There's more overweight people in our country than ever before. A lot of that is simply because of the toxin exposure we're getting. And this is interesting because a lot of people really beat themselves up or they think they're doing something wrong or they, you know, yeah. go through that whole thing mentally. And, and really it's like, you're just being exposed to so much toxicity. The body is going, I can't handle this. And I have a few options, right? If I let all this in the blood, I'm either going to get cancer or go into a coma or die. Well, those options suck. So what can I do to protect myself? I'm going to stash it over here in fat, which is like kind of like a landfill. It's like a, the body's hoping it's a temporary storage tank to keep to protect you from it and and so it gets stored in fat and and you know when the when you kind of run out of fat or the body's like i don't want to store more fat or, or there's not enough space then it goes into other fatty areas for ladies that would be the breast that could also be the brain that's a big ball of fat and also the bone marrow the bone marrow is where it gets really dangerous because that's your stem cell supply yeah and when that starts getting toxic it actually scars and you age faster and you can't regenerate your body tissues oh wow Okay. So that's, that's a toxicity side on a structural side. Oh, you want more on that? Oh, no. Uh, well, so we've been kind of, okay. So we talked about the problem and then yeah. the solution is cleansing. Cleansing. Uh, two part, get less toxins in you. So stop the influx. Yeah. Do and then cleanse the stuff out. And yeah. Cleanse the other stuff out. And as far as cleansing, I know there's a, I know you've talked about a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have to go super in depth into it right now. Maybe we'll do a second thing on that, but, mm -hmm. um, is there like a master cleanse that people do or is it like you need to focus on different parts of your There life? actually is one called the master cleanse. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. But uh, I, I don't think it's actually like, I don't think it lives up to its name. It's great. It's that lemonade diet. You maybe have heard of that. It's like you live on essentially uh, lemon juice in water with some maple syrup and cayenne pepper. And that's, it's meant to be like a 10 day. You can have as much of that as you want, but that's all you have for like 10 days. Oh, shit. That's, that's yeah. tough. It's pretty gnarly. Uh, so that is one type of cleanse. Um, I think, the, yeah. Um, um, in this case, people that have more fat in their system, is uh -huh. that better in this situation? Yes and no. So what happens is if, if, if you're a total string bean and have zero body fat and yet you're exposed to tons of toxins and your body can't get them out, those toxins have no place to go other than the brain and the marrow. And that's worse than it being in some ex, you know, in your love handles, right? Um, at the same time, there's a lot of burden to carrying around extra weight. And a lot of that stuff just depends on the genetics. The body is kind of, the body is going to respond to the toxic burden in some way. The genetics kind of determine, is it going to store more, is it going to store more body fat or is it going to put it into the brain and the bone marrow? Did that answer that? Okay, we were talking about cleanses. You're kind of elaborating a little bit on them. Yeah, so I think the first line of defense is to clean the liver okay. and the kidney and the colon because those are the parts that kind of do waste removal mm. and, and they're the filters of the body. So liver and kidney in particular, the filters of the body. And then the colon is where obviously like a lot of the waste comes out. So if you clean those first, it's kind of like you open the exit doors 
Yeah. And now all the other, now the body can start dealing with some of the stuff that's stuck elsewhere just because it can simply get out of the body. I would sense. also add the skin to that. A lot of people start doing like, oh, I'm going to do like a heavy metal cleanse and that's wonderful. But if the doors to get out aren't open yet, if you haven't opened the exits, you could just be moving it from one location to the other, potentially to a worse, more dangerous location. And so and you always want to open the exits first so that whatever you're cleansing later on can actually get out. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, like if you have a fish tank or a water filter or any filter and it's stuff's going through it and passing through the filter mesh. And then eventually over time, things start to like collect on it. And yeah. then the filter works less. And then if you clean the tank, it doesn't really matter because it's just still getting stuck. It's going to get dirty again. Waste. That's so, a really good analogy and I'm going to steal that. That's okay. So <laughs> by detoxing and like pushing all the stuff out of the filter, now you have an open system where everything's running quicker, more efficient. It can clean the water by itself, right? Gotcha. Okay. Well done, sir. So we have to the, the detox the liver, the kidneys, Kidney, the, colon. the colon, and I, I would also add in the skin. I mean, we also sweat out a lot of stuff too, and that's the biggest organ of the body. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So All that right. kind of covers chemical in terms of like an example of nutrition and then the cleansing side. And then I think, I think everybody probably understands the psychological side. I mean, that's stress, but that can also be trap stress. A lot of times old stuff that happened, we might still be living out of whether we're aware of it or not, by the way, because that can be an adaptation syndrome thing, but we might still be living out of old stories, old traumas, old, you know, life happens. And sometimes it gets stuck. Even if you think you dealt with it and processed it, sometimes it's, it's, it's you might've dealt with it spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and it still might be stuck in your body. Um, so a lot of times you have to deal with it bodily as well. So, um, but that's like the psychological and then the structural, um, maybe oh, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the problem. The solution for psychological is, is that like therapy or self-help? Like I'm going to, I'm going to say two sides on that one too, because if it's just stress, meaning like I am in a stressful situation, I have, you know, stress is weird because there can be so many reasons for it. And it's dependent on the individual, like what you find stressful and what I find stressful are going to be different. And yeah. there's probably a few commonalities, but um, so whatever, the, if the stress is related to like problems in life, yeah. we want to just solve those problems, right? Yeah. Or it might be stress management techniques. I do meditation. I do, you know, whatever those things, I exercise more, I do whatever those things are. Yeah. Um, and then, but if it's like trauma and old stories and things that are trapped in your body, then all the typical stuff, unless you get really, really, really lucky, and this is one of those areas where it's like, I know I have emotional stuff. I'm trying counseling. I'm trying all these emotional things. They're not working. Why not? Well, that's because it's the wrong tool for the job. As wonderful as they are, I'm not knocking them. It's just, you can't get to that deeper stuff through the mind because mm. it's subconscious. We can only get to the conscious mind through conscious mind stuff. Yeah. That's why you see people, maybe they smoke and they've been doing it so long. It's just a subconscious thing. And they go to a counselor. They're like, I don't want to smoke anymore. And the council goes, yeah, you know, it's bad for you, right? And they're like, yeah, I know it's bad. They go, you don't want to smoke anymore, right? No, I don't want to smoke anymore. And they walk out and light up because <laughs> it's not a conscious thing. Yeah. It's, it's subconscious. And so to get to the subconscious, we have to actually do it through the body. Because okay. the psyche, when it gets into that degree, like trauma, old stories, trapped emotions, whatever, it's in your body, hmm. specifically in the connective tissue. And so we have to get to that. We can't get to it through here. How the hell do you get through through the body? Um, primarily a system of working on the, the structural aspects of the body, which I haven't really covered or just about to, oh, and then oh. the cl and cleansing. Okay. If you clean toxins out of tissue, now the fascia, which is connective tissue, can structurally shift. And as it shifts, it, it, it actually kind of gets these little knots. And when those knots unwind, whatever little pockets of emotion or whatever was kind of stuck in there are allowed to come out. They can be free. Oh, ah, all right. Pretty fascinating okay. stuff. Yeah. I wonder if, because uh, I used to work with Manny to do all the um, yeah. uh, rolfing, which is all fascia work. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. He was telling me about it. So it's, I didn't know that your subconscious energies, whatever, gets blocked up in there too. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Where is your mind? I mean, we're like... We, we usually think it's your head, right? But, but is it? I mean, your mind kind of permeates your entire being. Yeah. And, and, and it, 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 they've actually proven that they've actually said the, um, uh, in neuroscience, they said that the subconscious is held in the fascia in the connective tissue. Interesting. And you see that with people. It's, it's really fascinating stuff as you work. That's why people, sometimes they'll get a massage and they have like 
an emotional release yeah. or sometimes people do cleansing and they get an emotional release or, or various things that might be impacting those systems. And you're like, why did that have an emotional effect? Well, there's emotion stuck in there. Yeah. And when it got manipulated and opened, those little knots came out, then you see it all. That's very all interesting. Kind of, yeah. It can finally heal. It got accessed. Interesting. Problem of access. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Structure. Yeah. Can we move on to structure. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the easiest example I could give on at the moment is there's a condition called, I mean, the technical terms, anterior head carriage, but we all know it's like forward head posture. You know, you've seen that, like you see like an elderly person, hopefully you can see me and they, yeah. they walk like this, like their head is kind of coming out of their neck yeah. instead of being, is that working? Like instead of being upright like this, yeah. it's like, it's yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, what that does, and that kind of thing can happen anywhere, but that's a really obvious one, right? And what that does structurally is it essentially disconnected my brain to my body. Okay. It's just like there's a, if you have a hose, right? And you put a kink in the hose, yeah, it doesn't work out so good, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of thing happening to your nervous system and your blood vessels and your connective tissue. It's got a kink in it. So whatever needs to flow through there doesn't flow as good. Hmm. And then that's going to create problems downstream. So the, the natural, the natural flow would be perfectly like erect, like where your hand, like just like a yeah, position. yeah. You just think like a good, a good normal posture, and is to whatever why? degree we're out of that, you know, things get weird wherever else they're affected. So is that why when people like in our um, our culture, when we have a sitting culture, is that why a lot there's a lot of issues because we're just not in this natural position very often. We're mostly sitting or totally. watching TV or on a on totally. a totally. So w the more we're in these weird positions and for longer, um, especially if you have high blood sugar, especially if you have not a great diet, what happens is you create inflammation and inflammation causes the body to lay down scar tissue. So you start getting kind of glued Interesting. into these positions and that glue, it, it locks everything in place. Yep. I, and we want to that. open that up, right? Yeah. Uh, I see that in some people, like Bryn's grandmother, she's like 90 something. Uh, mm -hmm. And my grandma actually, they are almost stuck in a seating position. Even when they're standing, even when they're standing. <laughs> like their yeah. butts out and they're like hunched over. Right. Like, like they can't actually like, like I just want to like pick them up and just like straighten them out. But they're like stuck in that position. They're glued. They're cemented yeah. shut. And, and so many of their whatever health problems they may be struggling with are simply for that reason. You know, a lot of times. Some of them have high dementia. So. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Because it, when the brain, I was just actually going to say that is when, when you're in that forward head posture, like I was kind of doing like that, when the brain is disconnected, it can't get the oxygen. It can't get the nutrition. It might get a trickle, but it's not getting the full flow. And yeah. so the brain is going to start suffering and you'll see cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, you know, various yeah. things like that. But that same, take that concept and apply it anywhere in the body. Yeah. Right. Wherever there is some degree of, of you know, structural or mechanical uh, compression, twisting, something's out of alignment in some way, it's not going to work as good. And you see this in the fighting application, like in martial arts, right? So how important is body mechanics to effective <laughs> yeah, uh, getting power and maintaining you know what i mean yep. obviously yep. um that's all based on structure hmm. so that's like structure in motion yeah so that's the problem and the solution i guess it depends on the person but is that just more like an active lifestyle uh, yeah so wherever depending on where the problems are the solution is going to be the same you might just customize it to the specific body part mm -hmm. but essentially it's um exercise stretching and cleansing. Okay. Because once you get that glue in there, you can't break that stuff up without a good amount of cleansing. And the cleansing. So like, for example, I'll use myself as an example. I sit a lot. I'm always yep. doing on the computer. I'm always marketing. And then when I'm done, I'll do a little workout or something. And then I'll go sit down on the couch to watch TV with bread and have dinner. <laughs> like, so it's a sitting, sitting, and then we sit in our cars to drive somewhere just to sit somewhere. Yeah. So like yeah. it's sitting, it's a sitting lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely feel it like in my, like my upper hips and I, I yes. stress it out and I do stuff, but like even right this second, I feel a little like tension there at all times. Mm -hmm. How do you cleanse that? Or do you, are you saying just cleansing your body to open up the yeah, gate yeah, yeah. with blood flow better? Correct. So as you cleanse and particularly in that respect, when we're talking about like the scar tissue, which is glue, right? We're talking yeah. about glue. Okay. Um, and the area you're talking about would be the hip flexors. 
they're, they're kind of like shortened and glued a little yeah. bit short. Yeah. So you can stretch them, you can get them body work done and all that's wonderful. But if those, those the term for it is adhesions, if those adhesions, if that glue is still there, it's going to come back. It's not really going to be like a permanent answer. And so the, the way to get those adhesions out, uh, two things. One is cleansing, particularly the liver. So when the liver is open and it's able to do its thing, like you gave that beautiful illustration of the fish tank with the filter cleaned up, now it can do a better job of cleaning the water, right? Yeah. One of the things it'll naturally do is break down scar tissue and get rid of it from anywhere in the body. Interesting. As long as the liver's clean. So if you clean the liver, it's going to start doing that on its own. Now, if that's enough, fantastic. If you have a really nasty case, we have to bring in certain kinds of enzymes that will break down. They're called fibrinolytic enzymes. They'll break down those, those little adhesions, break down the glue. And wow. I can open it up more. But just simply by cleansing, you're cleansing that fascia, you're cleansing that tissue, getting in, which makes it more pliable. Ah, there's bees or something flying around me. Um, <laughs> it makes it more pliable. And that allows your stretching to be more effective. That allows your exercise to be more effective. That allows your active lifestyle to be more effective that allows body work to be more effective and then it will actually get start working the way you hoped it would that makes sense right um what are biolytic enzymes is that like a supplement fibrinolytic enzymes yeah um so the those adhesions scar Mm -hmm. tissue glue all synonymous um they're caused by your your immune system is laying down stuff called fibrin okay and when you have enough fibrin you have scar tissue um, so what happens there is fibrinolytic means it breaks down fibrin. So oh. typically they're pancreatic enzymes that you get from a pig. Um, and you take those enzymes and, and if you, you know, it's, it's something you do under supervision. You just don't go out and get a bunch and mess up yourself. Um, you need to be ready for it. Oh, so it's not the vegan <laughs> diet. That's, not- that's yeah. You don't go willy nilly on that one. Uh, you make sure you're, you're in a good spot and your liver's clean and everything's hunky dory. And then, but that is the answer, you know, then you, you get going on the enzyme cleanses. Fasting can also do it too, you know. Um, what kind of fasting? Like intermediate fasting, intermediate, intermittent fasting, or like long-term, like full 24-hour, three-day fasting? Yeah, so intermittent fasting is, is definitely moving in the right direction. But if you want to kick it up a notch, then you just go to straight water fasting. You know, nothing but water for like 24 hours, 48 hours. Obviously not easy to do, and you don't go willy-nilly on that either. You do that under supervision. You make sure you know, your body is able to do that. So you approach with intelligence. On that note, we forgot none of this is medical advice or meant to replace that. <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. And uh, yeah, do, do what your doctor says. I'm just speaking in general here for people's informational purposes. But yeah, um, fasting and the more you know, intense the fast, you might say, like just a water fast for a long period of time, that'll start breaking that stuff down. Wow. Better and faster. The body, there's a concept or a phenomenon called autophagy, which means eat itself. And so the body will start, when you fast, the body needs food, right? Yeah. And so it starts eating for food all the crud. Mm. It'll eat the scar tissue. It'll eat the bad stuff. And it just kind of takes out the trash. But, you know, you're fasting. It's, a, it's, yeah. you gotta, it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, I, I practice intermittent fasting pretty often. Yeah. I haven't been that'll still do it. To, what? That'll still do it, just not as extreme or as effectively, right? Yeah. But it's a great thing to do. Well, that was a question I was, able to do it. was from Adam Mora. He actually posted a question saying, hey, what are your thoughts on juice cleanses and intermittent fasting? Which I think yeah. we got the intermittent fasting part down. Right. Uh, so how long do you have to fast for if it's you know, not intermittent? If it's not intermittent, you know, it all depends on the individual and your ability too. I mean, some people, I've worked with some people and they're like, they can't even fast for more than two hours in the beginning. Other people, they can like, they can just go do a week. Um, so a lot of it depends on what's going on. It depends on your blood sugar. It depends on your genetics, your constitution, your body type. Could depend on where you're at emotionally. Like if, if a lot, typically people who've been through a lot of, and I don't know if that's you, but typically a lot of people who've been through trauma and stuff, when they're fasting, all that will come up. You know, it's like all your demons come up. And that's why a lot of people um, will break a fast or why a lot of people, you know, they might be losing weight, humming along, just, not even fasting, just doing whatever they're doing. And like in those processes, you know, your, your demons can come up and yeah. it's like you're facing your stuff. So that's why it's not something to do willy nilly. You kind of really ease in, you know, you start by like pushing breakfast back an hour and see how that goes. And then maybe try pushing it back two hours and then maybe try skipping breakfast. And, you know, you kind of keep going like that. But I know people that have done it two weeks 
most people don't need to do that. I mean, I just saw a study maybe a year and a half ago that said if you can water fast, meaning nothing but water, which I haven't even been able to do this yet, for three days straight, 72 hours, you'll essentially have like a brand new immune system, which is really yeah. cool. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, how much of that do you have to do to like get all of your scar tissue and crud out? Well, that just depends how much there is. And again, we're back to the individual and their specific concerns and that stuff. Does that answer your question? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> I'm happy to clarify or keep well, going. Well, would you know, like, for example, if you went through the fasting and then is there a point where you kind of know or you feel that it's like enough? Like, how would you know when it stops? Yeah, because um, you need food. It's usually a good <laughs> okay. I mean, you want to stop. So here's, here's the concern I have anytime we're talking about fasting or cleansing or things. I mean, there are people that will say, oh, the answer is, you know, two weeks, three weeks. And some people will say it's three days. The concern I have with that, sorry, some pollen or something just flew in my mouth. But the concern I have with that is a lot of people will say, Oh, it's, for example, let's just say it's three days. A lot of people might say, oh, it's three days. I'm just going to do three days. And they'll kind of commit to three days and just do it, which I think is amazing. But their body may not be able to handle that yet. So you really have to be discerning and listen to your body. And it, it, I'll give, maybe this will help. It's kind of like, let's say I, I was working out and I was doing the bench press. And let's say I could do 100 pounds, right? And I'm like, hmm. I'm all right at that. Let, let's put on some more weight and I'm going to do, I crank it up to like 400 pounds. And if I try to lift that bar, I'm going to get a very strong signal in my body. Some alarm is going to go off going, if you do that, you're going to die, right? Don't do that. <laughs> you're going to get hurt. And if I did it anyway, there'd be consequences. But, and that would be because I didn't listen to my body. And, and the same thing will happen when we're stretching, when we're cleansing, when we're exercising, when we're fasting, it's, regardless of what some expert says the appropriate time is or the time to get a result is if if you're forcing it beyond what your body is trying to tell you or what it can do yet you can get into trouble and you know fasting is a good way to land yourself in the hospital um if your blood sugar isn't right if you're not ready if if most of us and, and this was me for sure most of us are, are and it's not even a put down it's just state of affairs is like we're disconnected from our body in the sense that we're not able to hear all the signals it gives us. And if, until we are able to hear those, it's easy to mess yourself up. And that's from a guy who messed himself up many, many times. So I think it's, there is a feeling for sure that it's like, I'm hitting the mark and this is working. It's, it's really interesting. And I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a feeling of. Well, when I, fit, when I do fasting, I yeah. definitely have a, by the way, when I say when I do fasting, I've never done a full day. I've only do, yeah. I've only done intermittent fasting. I think what that's like as max I've ever gone is sixteen hours or something. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a t there's a period of time, uh, usually because if I start eating like at three or four or something like that, there's a period of time between like twelve and four where I feel high, like energetically yeah. high, like where yes. I'm just like fuck, I can like do anything right. Now. I get on calls, I'm closing sales, I'm like doing stuff. I, yeah. I feel super great, and then all of a sudden my body's like fuck you time to eat like <laughs> right and if you didn't do that you'd be in <laughs> hot water right? yeah yeah <laughs> uh so i i'm just trying to give bela maybe an example of how i kind of feel, yeah. feel it working and then when it doesn't work from like when i'm kind of over it or done and, and i'll say this too a lot of it's going to depend on the, the individual in the sense that Joey might be the type that when he hits that point of like, oh, it's working, he feels energetic and he's like on fire. For me, my body starts breaking down scar tissue. And I'm like, oh, I'm just more flexible. And everyone is going to have their own little experience that lets you know, oh, I'm really hitting the mark. There isn't like a set. That's what makes some of this stuff hard. There isn't like a set thing. Just because that's Joey's experience, which is awesome, it doesn't mean it'll be yours. And They're if just, it's not yours, everybody has for, like different metabolism, right? Yeah, based on their hormones, their, their ancestry, their blood sugar, their genetics. There's so many factors that you just kind of start playing with it bit by bit and kind of saying, well, how does this affect me? What does it do? Does that feel good? Does that feel bad? Where am I at? And, and, you know, find someone who really knows to like kind of take you through the process um, because, you know, you don't want to mess yourself up and it's easy to do that, you know, or yeah. it can be. So, cause I think Bela was more, more asking like, Hey, I need like, what's like the, what's like the first step? Like, what, what do I need to do? And this to start fasting? 
yeah and it sounds like the answer is that it's different for everybody yeah um and maybe a good place to start is try a short intermittent fast where you skip. yeah so uh, a great way to start with intermittent fasting and i agree that absolutely that's probably the easiest safest best way to start and typically you start with a 12-hour period of eating and a 12-hour period of fasting so that would okay. be like pick any 12-hour period from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., from noon to midnight, whatever. And you have all your food for the day. Anything that's going to go in your mouth that's not water happens in that 12-hour period. And then outside of that, that other 12-hour period is nothing but is either nothing or water, basically. And some people can't even do that. You know, some people need to start with a 16-hour window of eating and then start, okay, now I'm going to take it to 15. I'm going to take it to 14. They kind of close up that window. But... Um, a, I think I'm already doing that. Awesome. And, and track that. And if you are, then you go, okay, cool. Let's close up that window. Let's try 11 hours. And once oh, it's okay. like, oh, that's comfortable. Then, okay, let's try closing up to 10 hours. And you just ease your way in, always listening to your body, seeing how all that stuff. Maybe I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if, if I exercise, like, um, in the middle of fasting, mm -hmm. would, does that create, like, inflammation? And does it make it? harder for my body to do a thing while it's fasting yeah exercise always creates inflammation because you're tearing things down it needs to inflame to heal so we always think of inflammation as bad and, and it can be bad and most often it is bad but we also inflame to heal so when you whack your thumb with a hammer or something it, it gets all swollen that's because your body's actually trying to heal it it's trying to send more blood and stuff there to to do the repair job so um exercise will always inflame that's not always a bad thing unless it the inflammation gets out of control. Um, but to exercise during a fast is hard on the body um, unless your body's really used to it and really good at fasting. And the reason is when you exercise, your body's burning up its fuel. It's burning up its, its food, right? So and does it speed it up or does it actually harm it? it again, it depends on the person and the situation. So like if, and I'm sorry, that's you know not a direct answer. That's just the answer is. Well, that's okay. It, it, some people, if they exercise in a fast, they will, they will feel better because it enhances the fast, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's going to enhance the fast. I do now, but, I, but if I did that before, I would crash and burn because my body, your body will either burn sugar for fuel or it's going to burn its own body fat for fuel. And until your body is really good at burning body fat and you go exercise in a fast, you already don't have any sugar and now you're going to burn more and your body doesn't know how to get fuel from its own fat. And that's where you can wind up like kind of feeling wonky or, or being messed up. So you want to make sure you just ease in and get your body to where, Hey, it knows how to burn fat. And once it does that, then you can start like the exercising in that fasting state. Okay. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, Mostly it's based on blood sugar and sleep. That makes sense. Yeah. Bela, check out an app called zero. Uh, it's, uh -huh. it's free. Um, I use it. It's, you uh, basically start and stop buttons like when you start a fast when you stop a fast it helps it sends a little alert saying hey one hour left in your fast like you know kind of it's just fun and it, tr it tracks everything like a little graphical tracking that's cool um, and it has a little well, coaching on there it's called zero it's it's free it's just a little free yeah app. i'm looking at it right now um so if you're gonna think about starting a minute passing that might be a fun way to track it it's just for me i like to gamify things as much as possible otherwise i like lose track of things um <laughs> Okay, we are running low on time because I know Steve, you got to bail soon. Um, Adam, I'm still on Adam's question. He talked about intermittent fasting, which we just went over. So obviously, mm -hmm. it's a pro. We like it. Just kind of take that test out on your own to kind of. I think out. it's way cool. You just have to, again, there's always like the guidelines, which is generally you're going to see like fast for 16 hours, eat within eight, you know, that kind of stuff. But you make it your own. Yeah. And you start where you are, you listen to your body, you start where you are, and you try and improve. Okay. That's basically mm -hmm. how you do it. The That's next right. question, juice is fasting. Was, what are your thoughts on juice cleanses? Now, before we jumped into that, I want to, yeah. I want to break through the whole. I think there's a very, um, and for me personally too, a very um, average. Uh, what's the word for? A, 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 what's the thing where everybody thinks something is a way? Um, anyways, basically, I think it's a very common misconception that a cleanse means a juice cleanse. Right, absolutely. Because uh, every time I've talked to you in the last few years, I've never talked about that. <laughs> I cleanse that, and then I'm like, right. so in my mind, I'm like, I gotta go get some juices. <laughs> so right. like, so like, what, 
what are the like juice cleanses? What the hell is what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's the difference? What do you think about that? So I have mixed feelings. And again, unfortunately, it depends on the individual. Some people, if you have blood sugar problems or you're sensitive to that and you go do juice, you're getting a blast of sugar without any fiber or anything else to kind of help deal with the blood sugar regulation. So that can actually kind of whack you out. If you do okay with that, you know, then you might feel great. So it depends on the individual again. It also depends on what kind of juice you're doing. Like if you do straight apple juice, you're, you're blasting yourself with sugar. Whereas if you're doing like, you know, kale juice or something, there's really not a lot of sugar in that. So, um, of course, the apple juice tastes better. So we tend to <laughs> go for some of that. Yeah. So I, I think there's a spectrum there. And some of that is based on the individual. I'm a big fan of, hey, try stuff. And if it works for you, do it. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't, then you find something else that does. So the juice cleanse is really less of a cleanse and more about blasting your body with a ton of nutrition. So when you have juice, you're getting a very concentrated amount of vitamins and minerals. So normally you'd have to eat like, say, uh, six bunches of kale, 12 apples and two things of celery and whatever else to get like that many vitamins and minerals, but you could juice it all into like one glass. So yeah. you can kind of blast your body with a ton of nutrition. So if you're nutritionally deficient, that makes sense. It's kind of a cool way to like get yourself back up to par. Right. Yeah. Um, but some people, their body doesn't handle a big blast of nutrients. It doesn't like it. It wants to be trickled in more slowly. Um, other people, again, I mentioned the sugar thing and for other people, um, it can cause, it can cause or aggravate certain conditions in Chinese medicine. There's a condition called cold and there's a condition called damp. And if they already have that kind of stuff, it could actually aggravate it. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, that can get very complex, but I think ultimately it's like, try it and see how you feel and aim for less sugar in your juice. And if you feel good, rock on. If you go, I don't feel good. Like I don't feel good when I juice cleanse. Okay. So it's just not for me. Yeah. Um, but that, that's my basic answer on that. Um, Michael Cooper house asked how long after exercising should you eat protein? What are the best types of natural foods that contain collagen? Okay. So, Oh, go ahead. Sounds like two separate questions. I should have prefaced that. <laughs> yeah. Well, all these things are highly debated, you know, um, so I'm always going to say, do what works for you yeah. just because that's going to be the best answer. But to, to be as direct as I can on that question, the best thing I, I've seen and, and found for me personally and for generally for most people is after you exercise, you drink water, 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 water until you're basically just, I need food, you know? Mm. And when that happens, you get, if you want the most effect from it, you eat red meat. That could be lamb, that could be venison, that could be elk, that could be beef, that could be buffalo, whatever. Um, and you want it as rare as you can possibly handle. Hmm. It's going to digest better. It's going to nourish your muscles better. It's going to give you what you need. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, that's an interesting that's, solution because a lot of yeah. times people are like, oh, 30 minutes after you work out. But I kind of like the idea of like, you just need to eat it when your body's like, feed me. <laughs> when your body says feed me, that's when you eat, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's... It, it's one of these things where we're, we're bombarded with so much information. This applies to everything and you could apply this to almost any field of study, but it's like we're bombarded with so much information. We have, um, we're, uh, we're educated beyond our understanding. That might be a good way to say it. It's like, we're so concerned what the research says, what the studies say, what the right, you know, what the answers are that a lot of times we don't listen to our body when our body might be saying, Hey, this is what's working. So for me, I'll, I'll just give you a personal example. I am, I, I need a lot of meat, right? I need a lot of animal food in my diet. And, and generally I don't feel good if I eat a lot of vegetables, but there were some people early on, you know, in my career and study that were, I really respected that were like raw vegans, you know, and they had all this compelling evidence. And, you know, one was like a major mentor of mine. So I was like, well, that's the right answer. And he's saying it. And he said it was such authority and all these books are saying, I was like, okay. So I didn't, I felt horrible, mm. you know? And it's like, it wasn't because, it was right or wrong. It was just wrong for me. Yeah. And it, it's very easy to fall in that trap. So rather than say, what's the perfect time to eat or what, you know, getting lost in sort of the details, it's, it's really good to say, well, what's my body telling me is working and really base it on that. And if I think if we kind of apply that rule for everything in health, we will tend to do a lot better rather than trying to do what's the right thing. What does the research say? Um, it's like, do I feel good when I do this? And do I feel better if I do that or better if I do this? 
hmm. and let that lead your guide. And, it, and also be open to change. It may change. Like there have been periods in my life, again, I, I need a lot of meat typically, but there have been periods in my life where I felt way better as a vegetarian. Yeah. And something was shifting and then it went back to like, okay, give me meat again. And I didn't get lost in any dogma of, of or, you know, this just like, well, this is what my body wants now. This is what makes it feel good. This is what's working. Yeah. And I think no, if you have that kind of fluid idea and, and able to listen to your body, you'll do a lot better. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, as, as far as collagen, um, bone broth is fantastic. And I would say go for that. You can also just get collagen supplements, but bone broth also slow cooked meats. Like if you think like a pot roast, um, there's a lot of that connective tissue in there that when exposed to low heat over a long period of time, it breaks all that stuff down and you can get yeah. it in a very absorbable way. Okay. Um, I do know that you're over time right now. Um, my dad did ask advice yeah. on building stronger immune system, anti-inflammatory supplements. I have a weird feeling your response is going to be kind of similar <laughs> to what we've talked about, about getting kind of, um, I mean, it depends on the cause of the inflammation. Inflammation can be caused by stress. It can be caused by toxic exposure. It can be caused by nutritional deficiency. Yeah. Um, if you want general anti-inflammatory stuff, I would say, you know, omega-3s typically are great, like fish oils um, and eating omega-3 foods. That would be like, you know, sardines, anchovies. Um, um, that doesn't sound good. No, <laughs> those are really high in it. But the good ones would be like bluefin tuna. But, you know, we're wiping those out and they're harder to get. And they're really expensive. You could also do uh, certain mackerel. Some mackerel has mercury issues, but other ones are okay. You can do um, yellowfin, you know, there, there's other things out there, but you want those uh, salmon, obviously. Um, you can do those higher omega-3 foods, preferably omega-3 animal foods. That's going to give you a lot of anti-inflammatory power. The other key to keep in mind is most inflammation is driven off of the gut. So if the more you take care of your digestion, the better your digestion is, the less inflammation you can have in your digestive system and that's the, it's the inflammation in the digestive tract that kind of fuels inflammation everywhere else in the body. So I always think, you know, look to digestion. And if there are digestive symptoms there, you know, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, burping, whatever, um, we want to get those under control. And that's a good sign that, okay, there's less, there's likely, you know, very likely less inflammation in my, in my gut, which means there's going to be less inflammation in my body. And now we don't even need the anti-inflammatories. Yeah. And it sounds like if we work on those four things we talked about of maybe positive cleansing, getting everything going correctly, getting good workout routines, exercising, eating more organic, less toxic yeah. food, like it's all going to kind of naturally heal itself. Yeah. The other thing, the high antioxidant foods are also very anti-inflammatory. Okay. Inflammation is essentially oxidation. So antioxidants combat inflammation or things that will cause inflammation. So that's like your blueberries and your green tea and your peppers and your garlic and your and basically any plant essentially that makes sense. Um, <laughs> primarily the vegetables and the herbs uh just because the fruit can have sugar which can spike inflammation for yeah some more than others wow. well, was, was that did that help with that one or i think so follow up to that um i do know though that you have to get off because you have an appointment at 115 i promised you i'd give you some time so well let me finish the other half of that just for good measure what, okay. what was the other half of that i know it's inflammation and then there's something immune system what was it stronger immune system Advice so, on building a stronger immune system? A lot of it's going to be the same just because inf um, your immune system deals with inflammation. Your immune system deals with a couple things. It deals with toxins and it deals with infections, right? Okay. So um, the less toxins we have coming in and the more antioxidants we're eating, that takes the burden off the immune system for the toxicity area. Now it can free up more of its energy and resources to go deal with infection, right? Um, and then it should hopefully wipe all the infection out and that kind of stuff. The other thing is digestion because 80% of your immune system is in your, is in your gut. So you want to eat fermented foods, which contain probiotics. Those are the good bacteria that are in your tummy, um, which make up a part of your immune system and work with it. And you want to have better digestion. So the less inflammation you have in your gut, as I described a moment ago, the better your immunity is going to be because your, your immunity isn't going to dealing with inflammation. So, uh, getting that dialed in, getting the digestion dialed in, getting the inflammation down, dealing with the toxicity burden, and just improving your digestion as much as possible. Finding good quality foods prepared in the right way that are more, dig meaning more digestible, that agree with you, right? So like I talked earlier, vegetables just like kale, like raw kale, I cannot digest that. <laughs> so that just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Other people can. 
Um, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, there you go. But you, you eat things that you can digest and that'll take, kind of take care of your digestion, which really helps the immunity. Um, the other thing I, I'd look at, it's a really sneaky one, is the teeth. Um, if there's any uh, dental issues or gingivitis or, or gum issues or pockets or you know, restorations that weren't done properly or that need to be done, that's a major immune stress. It's actually the only type of immune stress the body can't overcome on its own. So I'm always looking at with immunity, it's like, let's get inflammation down. Let's get uh, my blood sugar down or under control. Let's get my digestion improved. Let's get more of the antioxidant foods. Um, make sure the dental health is good. And of course, keep stress down because stress will wipe out your immune system. Avoid sugar. Sugar kills the immune system and get your sleep. If you get that going, that's a lot in a, you know, packed into one sentence. But if, if you get that kind of stuff going, your immune system will be but unstoppable. The overall consensus is yeah. still the same. Like, take care of yourself. Yeah. And you'll be, you know, like, shit's going to work out. Like, your body will heal itself. You're, like, everything's going to be okay as long as you're doing smart, safe. Take care of it. Give it what it needs. Put it in the right you know, state, if you will, of like environment, you know, and, you know stress, that kind of stuff. And, 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 and then relax and let it do its thing. And that's one of the bigger challenges because when things bug you, you're stressed about it and it's interfering with your life. But if you just relax and know, it's like, I'm doing these things and I'm just going to relax and let it take, let it do what it needs to do. A lot of times our head gets in the way yeah. and, and that can, that stress interferes with the results we would have gotten. Yeah. Uh, ironically, it's one of the greater tragedies. But if we just chill out and let it do its thing, it, it'll work. Yeah. And I guess the biggest problem is that we as a society have a lack of education on like what to do to get rid of, to help these things. Um, yeah. You so know, one of, the, one of the hardest pills for me to swallow was that so much of I, my suffering was not for lack of effort, not for wanting, not for doing all the things, not for spending money. It was just simply for what I didn't yet know. Yeah. And that was a hard one. It's like, I'm suffering just because I just innocently, because I just don't know. Yeah. And I think we all fall into that in, in our own ways. And so the more we, you know, the more information we get, not to overload it, but it's, it's basic stuff. It, but it's, it's learning how to listen to your body, relax about it all, and know what those things are and how to move through it. Yeah. And if you can do that, you can conquer anything. I'm convinced of that. All right. Well, that makes sense. I know you got to go. I keep saying it. So I'm going to make sure. I, I do of... have to run now. <laughs> all right thank See, you for all my coming, man. hopefully but, that helps you yeah, guys yes, yes, enjoy thank you that's so informative and i'm sure everybody else is gonna watch this will run it <laughs> right but on. we'll talk to you about other things too sounds good you guys take care bye, bye.